Hello, my name is Stephen Thomas and welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to take a look at a demo of a human in the loop AI agent written with Logic Apps Agent Loop. This is a new feature of Logic Apps and is currently in public preview. In this demo, we're going to take a look at a real life business process that I've modeled inside of an AI agent. This process will take a failed code translation and look up the result that it should be and provide user input to confirm and select the right input value. Once selected, it'll update the code translation table or the backend system with the correct information and reprocess the message. The final step, it will send you an email to let it know that it has completed this process. This is something that is challenging to solve today without using AI agents and logic apps. So with that, let's jump in and take a look at using logic apps with a human in the loop scenario. Now, before we dive into the logic app, let's talk about the business problem that this AI agent is going to solve. One of my clients today has an existing process that does a code translation before sending the data to the backend system. Sometimes this code translations get out of sync or new resources are added and are sometimes missed in some of the systems. So currently today, when the process has an exception, a user needs to get involved to review how to solve the problem. Currently today, they will look up the attorney information using first and last name. All states have a publicly accessible website where you can look up attorney information. In this case, we're gonna look up the bar ID of that attorney and update it either in our code translation tables or in our backend system. Sometimes we might have to update it in both. Once it is updated, we're gonna reprocess the message. Now this scenario happens a few times a month and it takes about two hours for a person to get involved, research this and solve this problem. So in total, I'm estimating they spend about 48 hours a year working on this problem. Now that isn't a whole lot of time that is spent on this, but take a look at the amount of time I spent building the AI agent that does essentially the same thing, and it took about four hours. So you can see there's a pretty substantial return on investment for just this single business process. So let's take a look at our logic app that I built to solve this problem. I've simply created a logic app here using the agent loop workflow, and it's called Fix Missing Attorney. Now this is started via an HTTP request. The current process simply terminates, but that could be replaced with a call to this agent to work on solving the exception scenario. Now what makes this a human in the loop agent process is the way I define this default agent. Here in this default agent, I've set the channel property to allow both input and output channels. This allows you to provide input into the agent and get results back. Now, you could do this via Teams or some other communication mechanism that allows real-time communication with your humans. Or in this case, we're going to simply just dive into a running workflow and interact with this agent kind of via a chat session. Now, that wouldn't really be the way you would implement this in a production scenario, but it's a little harder for me to set up Teams and get that all set up with my demo account. So we're just going to dive into the workflow via chat mode, and I'll show you how to do that. So this is set up to allow both input and output channels. Now the parameters set up here are simply to use our chat GPT-4.1 model and if you want more information on how to set these up specifically follow the link below to my getting started video and I will walk you through step by step on how to set up your first logic app agent loop process. So for now I'm making the assumption that you know how to set this up or I've already done so in the past. So I'm setting up my default model here and in this case, I'm going to pass in system instructions, which we'll look at in just a moment. And then I have my user instructions. And this is information that I would pull from my inbound request, such as the first and last name of the person, the code for that attorney. We get a code and we translate it into a bar number and the original error information to determine where the error happened in the process, along with the document ID that we're going to use to reprocess later. So this is all information that's being fed into our agent as input into that process. Now the system instructions here are going to tell the agent how to behave and how to operate through our process. And that's defined here. Simply pulled it out and put it in a composed shape so it's a little easier to read. Now you can read all these agent instructions in the blog post that's referenced below, and you can copy and paste them right out of there and use them as you see fit or modify them as you would like as well. Let's take a look at them real quick in a little bit more readable format here in Notepad. 
And this just outlines what we want to have happen in this process. So first off, we're going to do an attorney lookup. Then if there's multiple records selected, then this is the case where we want the human to be involved. So we want that human to then determine which record we're going to select. We also want to make sure that no uh, deceased or disbarred attorneys are selected from that person. Now, this is something that we could have whittled out sooner in the process to just simply filter those out. But as part of the demo, I kind of wanted to show what this would look like if we included this information. So you could have your AI agent ensure that these rules are enforced. Then I'm going to do one of two scenarios based on the error message. It's either going to add to our code translation table or it's going to add to the back in person table based on the error information. Now, again, the it's very hard coded here to the error information. In real life, you it can be a lot more vague and the AI agent is just going to interpret that for you. And then the final confirmation, I'm going to send a confirmation email out that's just going to say, hey, this is what we added and this is what we did. And this is how we reprocess the message. Now, there's two things I want to point out here. Now, I do actually send multiple emails in this process. I do that at the top level here. I say, this is the administration email address to use. So I can set it at one place at the top here and it's used throughout the whole process. Something else I wanted to point out here is that when I return the search results, which is just doing essentially a screen scrape of a website, I didn't want to parse the JSON natively. So I just simply called out the field names in that JSON file, such as name, full link, status, etc. And the AI agent is going to parse that response for me. So that kind of saves me some time there of having to deal with that. And also want to point out that sometimes these human in the loop workflows don't complete. So the workflow in your Azure portal will just kind of run forever. So I simply added a step that said, hey, when you're all done processing and you've sent out that final confirmation email, we'll just simply end the workflow. So this way we're ensuring that that process is going to complete. And we'll take a look at that in more detail in a moment. So with that, let's jump back to our workflow and take a look at how we set up these tools here. So each branch here are different tools that this AI agent has available to it, and they're in no particular order. So I have email the user, and when I set this up, I won't go through these for all of them, but you can create uh, parameters here. These are agent parameters, and this is how the agent knows to communicate with your tools. So this is the information that your tool is definitely expecting to be sent in. And for an email of the user, you would expect an address and a subject and a body. So these are just parameters that are created here. And then inside of my email process here, I simply reference these agent parameters. When you click on here, it's this agent parameter at the bottom and set those all through here. So this tool here, this send email tool, can be used for multiple different emails and multiple different types of communication throughout the process. You don't have to have one that says, you know, initial email, second email, it's all done through parameters. Then the next tool here is gonna insert a row into the SQL table. And here you set the tool description. And this is how the agent knows what this tool is gonna do. So in this case, this tool is gonna insert a new record into SQL using the bar number and the code field, the code decode value that we're gonna set up. And again, I set up two agent parameters here. And next in our list of tools is where we have to create the person record. And again, it just outlines the tool description. We're passing in first name, last name, and bar number. And it's gonna go ahead and mock this call to the backend system to create that person record. Here we have that end workflow step that I added, and this is a tool that simply calls terminate with success and ends the workflow. And this is to ensure that our workflow completes and just doesn't run forever as we process this human in the loop workflow. Resubmit message, once everything is complete, we will then go ahead and resubmit our message. And the final tool I have here is actually doing the attorney lookup. And this is just a simple HTTP call. And this is using a service called scrapingb.com which allows you to screen scrape websites. In this case, we're making a call passing in our first name and last name. As you can see here, I am using these not as agent parameters, but as parameters from our inbound HTTP call, just to show that you can use that data as well, not necessarily agent parameters. And this is going to do a query on this publicly accessible website and then format that data coming back. Now, this tool, this scraping B, allows you to format the data coming back based on information that you supply it. So I simply told it rather than return me an HTML page, I only want to return uh, essentially a table of the attorney information based on the first last name. So this is all part of this service that I'm using to handle that. 
definitely could have handled it in AI as well in this agent service as well, but I'm just showing you that you can now plug in third-party services here to better format your data as you receive it back. So that's really all I do to outline this process. So let's go ahead and run this and see our results. Now I've jumped over here to Postman and I'm simply going to make an HTTP post into this human in a loop workflow and see what happens. I have a document ID here along with uh, first and last name of a lawyer. Now I know that this is going to return multiple results, which is kind of what I want in this scenario. And we're just going to go ahead and run this. Now this will give me a 202 accepted because it just is a request process. I'm not expecting a response and it's going to kick off that human in the loop workflow. So let's jump back to our logic app and let's jump into our running instances here. So I'm going to close out of the designer and go into run history. Now, once this process is started, you will see here that it is running. Now, these ones down here that are canceled, these are ones that did not terminate correctly. The ones that are succeeded, well, obviously it did work successfully and then it did terminate using our tool where we said to terminate the workflow. So to jump into this running workflow, I'm going to simply click the running instance ID. And as part of this process here, we can see where we're at in our workflow process. And here's this agent chat, and this is what it's returned. And it says multiple records have matched. So it's simply wanting me to return the number of the person that I want to proceed with. And in this case, let's pick somebody that is deceased. Let's go with right here, number 19. And I simply say 19 and enter. And now, like I said, you could replace this with like a Teams chat instead of this agent chat. This is just for demo purposes here. And right now it did come back and say, hey, this person is deceased. You can't use this individual. So let's go ahead and select somebody else. Let's select number 18. And this is going to go ahead and process and complete that. And when this is all done, we're going to go ahead and get an email with the results of this process. So I'm going to give this just a moment and I'm going to jump back in about 45 seconds. Okay, so our process is complete. Let's take a look at the confirmation email that I got back. You can see right here, this is the person record that we selected. Now in the chat experience before I selected this, it does actually have a link to the person's uh, profile on the website. So if I wanted to make sure I selected the right person, I could follow these detail links to get more information about that person. And this is all information that is returned through that scraping B call through that publicly accessible website. Now it's simply saying here that I updated my code translation table. The ID is six in that table and that it resubmitted the original message. And I also wanted it to output what happened to that resubmission and it just saying successfully resubmitted. And then I have it saying the date time. So I know that it actually did make that call. So we can jump back over here. Let's do a refresh on our agent process. So once I do the refresh, you'll be able to see all the steps in this process. You can look through, you can scroll through the chat history here, and you'll be able to see each of these individual agent steps that execute here. As I click on these here, they will update our input and outputs here. So it's very easy to dive into these workflows once they've completed and see exactly what this agent chose to do through the process. Let's, it does not look like I see, I don't see an end workflow here. So it looks like it didn't terminate this workflow. So let's jump back over here and sure enough, this is still running. Let's do a refresh just to make sure. Oh, it did complete. So it did complete that workflow. It didn't seem to call it out there in the process. So probably would have expected to see a call out here, but in fact, it did actually end this workflow just as we expected it to. So let's run our other scenario real quick where we're gonna do this person here and I'm gonna kick that process off. And the, the really the key thing here is I gave it a set of instructions, no coding whatsoever. And by just information in our message here, which we returned from our process call when there is an exception, I'm able to dynamically determine the output of that agent, correct the situation and resubmit the message. All while when there is a scenario where I have multiple records, I did put it in there, only multiple records, does it need to involve the human, that it will involve a human and a human to make that selection. So here is just a different error message. Let's again, jump into that run history, do our refresh here. And we got the same set of results that we would expect before. Like I said, you could click on these profile links and go right to that person's profile so that you can select the right one. Let's go ahead and select 
number, not somebody deceased, not somebody inactive. Let's go number seven. And in this case, it's a slightly different workflow process. This case, it needs to add the person to the back end system. So we'll give it just a moment to complete and I'm gonna jump back in about 30 seconds. Okay, that process has completed. We can see here again, we got the email here, uh, processed the correct person table and resubmitted the original message. And in this case, I got a, another email confirmation here for the same record. In this case, I was wondering where my system information was about the document being resubmitted. And sure enough, here's that information now in this call. So in this case, the agent going through this process had decided to send the two different emails, one before I had resubmitted the message and one after. And that kind of gets to this process where sometimes you'll get slightly unexpected results. In this case, there was no impact to the business process. We still got our person added successfully to the backend system and resubmitted as we wanted to. Let's just jump back over here. Let's do a refresh here. And this will, you can see here, I did email the user twice. And this is something where now I could take this information, go back to my agent instructions and be sure to say, hey, don't send more than one email, only send the email at the very end of the process. And let's just make sure that this process completed successfully. And sure enough, it was succeeded. So I did call that final step in the agent process to complete that. So this process kind of highlights how it is non-deterministic, so you won't get the exact same results every time. If you are finicky about how you want that exact email formatted, the tables and stuff like that, you would want to include that in your agent instructions to make sure that it is unique and consistent every time. So in this scenario, we wrote a high level set of agent instructions. And in fact, I just created a high level set of bullet points. I sent it over to Gemini and said, reformat these for agent instructions, gave it my list, and it gave me back a much more rich full set of agent instructions. And now as we iterate through this and kind of test this process, as I run into scenarios that aren't quite how I want them to operate, I would go back and refine those agent instructions. So all that without impacting any of the tools that I have set up or impacting anything to the business process. So this was kind of designed to just give you a high level walkthrough of a human in the loop AI agent built using Logic Apps Agent Loop. If you like this video and like this content, feel free to like and subscribe. And if you want more details about the agent instructions, make sure you follow the link to the blog post below. And if you want a step-by-step -step walkthrough of how to create one of these agent processes yourself, I walk through it step-by-step, -step. takes about 30 minutes starting from scratch and follow that link, the step-by-step -step video below as well. Thank you, and don't forget to like and subscribe.